Alright, good morning everybody, or good afternoon, depending on what time you're uh, watching this video. Uh, today we're going to start on some of the new stuff with fractions. So the first thing we're going to do today is look at uh, how we multiply a whole number times a fraction. Uh, so this is actually not too, too bad. What I'm going to do to get you guys through it is uh, we're going to do our usual thing where I'm going to show you how we represent uh, fraction multiplication by using uh, diagrams, then we're going to talk about how we do it using number lines, and then we're going to talk about how we do it using just the straight math, um, none of which are terribly difficult. I think that uh, most students tend to do quite well in this section. Um, so my video today isn't going to be too long, hopefully. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so we're going to take a look, uh, again, uh, pictures first. So my first equation that I'm going to look at here is uh, multiplying 3 times 3 over 4, or 3 fourths. Now, remember what this means in a multiplication statement is 3 groups of 3 quarters, or 3 fourths. Alright, so we're going to start by drawing 3 groups of 3 fourths. So I'm going to start drawing rectangles. and then breaking each rectangle up into four somewhat equal groups so that I know that they're roughly equal. Alright, and then what I'm going to have to do is, uh, just like before when I draw three-fourths, I'm going to color in three sections in each rectangle. Okay, so now what I have here is three groups of three fourths. All right. So now what we want to do is actually take all of these colored uh, spaces and sort of <coughs> sorry, my nose is really stuffed up. Um, take all these colored spaces and sort of uh, merge them together so that everything's kind of in a row. And so here's what I mean by that. I'm going to take what I've got here, switch it back to black. All right, and kind of redraw this diagram. All right, so I'm going to draw my three rectangles again. And again, I'm going to break them up into fourths. Oh, that was bad. Let's just redo that. All right, sorry guys. All right, break them up into fourths. Uh, but now what I'm going to do, when I'm coloring them in, instead of coloring three in each rectangle, I'm just going to color in one, two, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. Okay, because that's how many I have colored in in total. So I'm color one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so all I've kind of done is taken these colored blocks and just sort of shifted them all down this way and pushed everything to the left. That way it's easy to see sort of what I have and what's kind of left over. So now I have nine spaces colored in in total and three that are not colored in. So I'm just going to redraw my little thing there to show you that I can kind of merge those. All right. And now, my answer then is going to be um, just what I have. So I've got one hole, two holes, and then one fourth left over. So my answer is going to be two, because I have two whole blocks, and then one fourth, because I have one out of four there. So my answer is 2 and 1 fourth. This fraction is in lowest terms, which is exactly what I wanted. And it's uh, a mixed number and not an improper fraction. So that's my answer. Alright, let's try one more example. I'll do this one quickly without as much explanation. So I've got two groups of two thirds. So I'm going to draw two rectangles. And I'm going to break them up into thirds. And in each one, I'm going to color in 
two of the thirds. Like that. Now I'm going to take everything and combine it and redraw it. Alright, those are beautiful. Anyways, uh, so I have four colored in spaces in total on the top, so I'm going to color my first four spaces like that. So again, all I've done is just shift the colored spaces all the way uh, to the left like this. And now I'm just going to write down exactly what I have. I have one whole number. Ooh, I'll leave it blue. And then one third there, because I only have one of my three spaces actually shaded in. So I'm going to get one and one third. Again, this is in lowest terms because there's no fraction that's equivalent to one third that's smaller than one third. And uh, it's a mixed number and not an improper fraction, so I'm happy. Now we're going to take a look at how we represent fraction or multiplying fractions by whole numbers on a number line. Uh, this is actually very similar to how we did things in the integers unit and how we usually do things on number lines, where we sort of it depends how we break up the number line and it depends on uh, how much we jump up each time. So it's going to involve arrows and dividing up our number line. And we're dealing with pretty small numbers here because we're dealing with fractions. So I made my number line pretty small, going from zero to two. Um, you're gonna kind of have you'll get better at, at figuring out how big your number line has to be as we keep going in this unit. Um, but I figured that mine would be greater than one because uh, I'm gonna have four of one third. So I figure it should be bigger than one. Um, but let's look at how we're gonna break up our number line first of all. This is actually not too bad. To decide how to divide up your number line, look at your denominator on your fraction. It's in thirds, so I want to somehow represent thirds on my number line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up each whole number into three parts. So I'm going to put a little tick there and a little tick there. So this number here represents one third, two thirds, and of course one represents three thirds. And then we're going to break between one and two up into thirds as well. Okay, so that's how we decide how to do this. What our 4 tells us here is how many times we're going to jump. And so we're going to have 4 arrows total on our diagram, one for each whole number there. And each arrow is going to jump up one time. Okay, so just to recap, the denominator tells you what to break your number line up into. The whole number tells you how many arrows you're going to have, and your numerator tells you how many time or how many numbers are going to be in each arrow. So here's what I mean by that. Based on this uh, fraction here, I'm going to jump up four times, and I'm going to jump up one each time. So my number line should look like this: one, two, three, four. Alright, so you see how I have one, two, three, four arrows. Each arrow jumps up one time. And my answer is going to be whatever this space here is. So my answer should be, oops, should be one. Sorry, one. Because I am my whole, my whole, <coughs> sorry. Sorry, I had a bit of a coughing attack there, and I figured you guys didn't want to hear that on me. Uh, camera. So, uh, anyway, what I was saying is we're at, our whole number is 1, so I'm definitely going to have a 1, and this is going to be a mixed fraction. And then this goes, uh, this is 1 third past 1, so this is 1 and 1 third. So the remaining of my fraction will be 1 third. Should be my answer. Alright, and finally we're going to look at how we solve these problems uh, mathematically, or uh, symbolically, which is uh, by far easiest way of solving them. Most of you will be able to do these really quickly, um, and you'll find that it's not too bad. Some of you may already have picked up on this pattern, but so far the answers we've had um, have all been mixed number fractions, so it's a little tougher to tell the pattern that way. So I'm going to show you exactly what we have to do, and it's actually pretty simple. To figure out how to multiply a whole number 
times a fraction. All you need to do, listening carefully, is multiply the whole number times the numerator and leave the denominator the same. Then what you'll need to do is convert that into a mixed number. It's just that simple. So here, 7 times 3 fifths, all I have to do is multiply 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21 over 5. Okay, and now all I need to do is take my improper fraction here, and switch it into a mixed number fraction. So I know that 5 goes into 21 4 times evenly. So that 4 is going to be my whole number. Okay. And when I multiply 4 times 5, I get 20, which means I have one remainder. And then I keep my, fi my fifth. So it's 4 and 1 fifth. Alright, so I'm just going to show you guys that's kind of the progression. So all you need to do is multiply the 7 times the 3 and leave the denominator the same. Over here, I have 4 times 5, 6. So all I have to do is multiply 4 times 5. All right, 4 times 5 is 20 over 6. 6 goes into 20 uh, 3 times equally. And then what happens is I have... Uh, uh, sorry, 3 times 6 is 18, so my remainder is 2. 20 minus 18 is 2 over 6. Now here, I have a... Uh, my fraction is not in lowest terms. I can reduce 2, 6 to an equivalent lower fraction. So I'm just going to take 3 and 2 thirds and turn it into 3. And all I have to do is divide 2 by 2 and 6 by 2. And I get 3 and 1 third. That's it. Not too bad to solve. Uh, there's some textbook questions for you guys to do. Please ask questions if you're confused. If you're having a really hard time with this stuff, it's only going to get worse if you don't ask questions because we start moving into how to multiply a fraction times a fraction, which is a little bit more complicated. So please ask for help if you don't understand something. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys when I get back, which should be uh, on Monday. All right, we'll see you guys then. Bye.